Okay, shall we start? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Planning Commission meeting. Today's date is September 8th, 2021, and the time is 931. And today's meeting is completely remote via Zoom. So for you at home who are viewing the meeting or may wish to participate in the meeting, I wanted to take a moment to explain how the meeting will run today. To view, follow along, or participate in today's meeting, I recommend using the Planning Commission Zoom meeting link, which is posted on the Planning Department's homepage at sccoplanning.com. Alternatively, you may participate in today's meeting by phone. Please dial 1-669-900-6833 to participate via phone. And when prompted, please enter collaboration code number 832-9065-6284. This information is also posted on our website if you would like this number again. And if you wish to simply view today's meeting, it is being broadcast live on television. And for more information about the channel, please visit the community television website. So I wanted to provide a couple of instructions on how to participate in today's meeting. So for each agenda's uh, public hearing item, time will be provided for speakers to contribute their testimony. Speakers will be muted until called on to speak. I will ask participants who wish to provide testimony to either remotely raise their hand by selecting the hand icon on the Zoom link, or by calling in by telephone by remotely raising your hand by pressing star nine on your telephone. I will call on participants via either your name or the last four digits of your telephone number. If you are participating via the Zoom link, when I call on you to speak, you'll see a pop-up on your screen that says unmute. Please accept the pop-up, state your name for the record, and provide your testimony. If calling in via telephone, you must unmute yourself by pressing star six. Members of the public will be provided three minutes to speak on each public hearing item. If at any time you have difficulty connecting to today's meeting via the Zoom link or calling in via telephone, please email our support staff, Michael Lamb at michael.lamb, L-A-M, at santacruzcounty.us. He will be checking his email periodically throughout the meeting and is on standby to assist you. All right, uh, after covering those meeting logistics, I'll turn it over to the Planning Commission Chair, Judith Lazenby. Good morning, Judith. Good morning, Ms. Drake. And thank you, and good morning all, and welcome to this, the September 8th, 2021 meeting of the Santa Cruz County Planning Department, uh, Planning Commission. The time is now 934, and I will call the meeting to order. May we have a roll call, please, Ms. Drake? Um, yes, Commissioner Gordon? Here. Commissioner Schaefer Freitas? Aye. Did I get it here? Yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Jones? Yeah. I'll see you about eight o'clock or whatever. Yeah, I'll call and check in. Okay. Have a good meeting. Commissioner Dan? Here. And Chair Lazenby? Here. Are there any additions or corrections to today's agenda? Uh, no, there are not. Thank you. Are there any ex parte communications from any commissioner? Hearing none. At this time, the commission will hear comments from the public on, on issues of concern, but they will be issues that are not on today's agenda. So do we have any members of the public, Ms. Drake? Ten. Um, I am not seeing any this morning. I'll check in with our support staff to see if we have any attendees in the lobby. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm not seeing any, thank you. 
So we will then move on to the scheduled items, the approval of the minutes from the July 14th, 2021 meeting. I'll move approval of the minutes. Was that a motion to approve? Yes. Is there a second? I'm sorry, Commissioner Dan, did you second? Um, I didn't, but I can. Um, I just oh. was absent for this meeting, but I did review the, the minutes. So I can't okay. and it'd be better if somebody else who's actually there seconded. But, okay. But I'll second for the record. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Then um, all in favor of the um, approval of the minutes? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay. And I'm, I am I. <laughs> So now we are going on to item number six, the public hearing on the proposed year 2022 growth rate, growth goal. Do we have a staff report? Um, we should have Daisy uh, Allen joining us from our team. Um, Walter, you should have an attendee named Daisy. No, we don't have any attendees. What about Natisha Williams? As I said, no attendees. Maybe you should have them call in on a panelist. Okay. Okay, let's take a short uh, recess while we connect with the staff member for the presentation. Chair, may five minute recess until uh, 9.45 and while we connect with a staff person from our department for the presentation. Okay, that'll be fine. Okay, so we'll take a break until 9.45. We will see you in six minutes.
I apologize for the delay. It seems to be taking longer than we thought. Um, yes, Chair, I am back. I just spoke to our CTV staff and um, it looks like we need to, um, to disconnect from this meeting and reconnect because our meeting is not in the correct webinar format. So we cannot connect to attendees at the moment. Um, so CTV staff has informed me that we need to disconnect all of us and rejoin in five minutes. It's the same meeting link. So for members of the public who, I don't think actually we have any members of the public who are able to hear us right now, but if you are a member of the public and are able to hear us, we will be re reconnecting using the same link posted on the planning department website. And all of you should be using the link sent to you by directly by CTV staff. So we would reconnect then at what? Like immediately. Um, I actually have a meeting scheduled um, and in like an hour. So okay. we just had a, a real short meeting today that I could get away with that. So um, yes, so, so let's all do this rapidly so we can get back into it. Um, okay. CV, the CTV staff told me that it would take about five minutes. So we should reconnect at 9.55 and uh, we can reconvene the meeting at 10 a.m. Okay, great. See you guys then. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.
then you can let all of the attendees in as well, please. And we need to promote all of, we need to promote Stephanie, Paya, and Natisha to participant. One more time, please. Will you please promote me to co-host and Natisha, Paya, and Stephanie should all be participants when you let the attendees come in. Okay. I do not see, uh, Natisha, I do see a Stephanie Hansen. Okay, just when we let this, are you gonna let the attendees Um, I apologize for the technical difficulties this morning. Um, we had an issue with um, our Zoom TV link. Um, I wanted to provide a little bit of information quickly on how to participate via phone because I believe um, we um, failed to air the instructions earlier. So just quickly, the Zoom meeting link for today's Planning Commission meeting is on the Planning Department's website um, at sccoplanning.com. And um, you may follow the meeting or participate in the meeting using the Zoom link. Or alternatively, you may call in to provide comment today, which is, and the phone number is 669-669. 900-6833 and the collaboration code is 832-9065-6284. And we are now on the first public hearing item on the agenda, which is the public hearing recommendation to the Board of Supervisors regarding the proposed year 2022 growth goal. And we have us with us this morning, Natisha Williams with the planning department who will uh, make a presentation. So good morning, Natisha. Um, good morning. Will you please um, load the PowerPoint for the growth goal? Um, great. That's um, being handled by CTV, correct? Yes. Great. Walter, will you please? Uh start the slideshow from the beginning. Good morning. Walter, will you please start the slideshow from the beginning? We're seeing the, the PowerPoint screen. Walter, will you please press from beginning on the PowerPoint screen to start the presentation?
are you able to load the PowerPoint? Jocelyn, is it possible for me to share my screen? Um, that might be better. Is it possible to allow Natisha to share her screen at, alternatively here so that she can run the PowerPoint presentation? Alternatively, Jocelyn, I can forward it this your way as well. Um, it looks like he's having some technical difficulties. Hold on just a moment. It looks like we're having a Zoom issue again. So it looks like I have the ability to share video. So let me try to share mine. Okay. Okay, it looks like I, can, I cannot share my screen while someone else is sharing their screen. Okay, I'm asking, I've been texting Walter. Let's see if we can get that. All right. <clears throat> okay. Let me know if you can see that. Yay, we can. Okay, great. Okay, good morning, everyone. Gotten off to a little bit of a bumpy start, but here we go. Um, today I'll be presenting, my name is Natisha Williams, and I'll be presenting on the year 2022 growth goal. Um, the county's growth management system was instituted in 1979 following the adoption of, the me of Measure J in order to address the resource and public services impacts of population growth in Santa Cruz County. As part of the growth management system, each year the county is required to set an annual growth goal for the upcoming year that represents a fair share of the state's growth. The 2022 growth goal report is before you today for consideration prior to making a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. This report examines various factors used in establishing the year 2022 growth goal for the unincorporated area and includes analysis of population growth trends, resource constraints, and the status of this year's allocations. The report also includes analysis of the county's housing needs, including progress towards meeting the county's RENA or regional housing needs allocation, um, as well as demolition permits and density bonus projects approved in the past year the report also includes the ADU annual report, um, as well as a discussion on the permanent room housing project applications and the impact of recent state law on the county's growth management system. As noted in the growth goal report, the unincorporated area of Santa Cruz County had an estimated negative 0.43% growth rate last year. All jurisdictions in the county, except for the city of Scotts Valley, also saw negative growth rates. And the county as a whole has seen declining population totals in recent years, and the state population also decreased by negative 0.46% in 2020. And this is the first annual decline in state population since population estimates have been recorded. Population estimates for cities and un unincorporated counties are determined by the Department of Finance um, using the housing unit method, which means that the number of new housing units constructed each year plays a large part in determining the population estimates. And the DOF also notes that um, the state's unprecedented 
unprecedented negative growth last year is the result of three major factors. The first is the continuing decline in natural increase or um, the number of births minus the number of deaths and uh, the continuing decline in foreign immigration, which was recently accelerated by um, federal policy, as well as increased deaths associated with the COVID-19 pandemic, which increased deaths across the state by an estimated 51,000 or 19% above the average death rate for the past three years. As deaths related to the pandemic decline and with federal policy changes, it's expected that the state will return to a positive annual growth rate in coming years. Recent population estimates for Santa Cruz County also indicate a down, continuing downward trend of population growth rates in the decades since the 1960s and 70s, when the county grew much faster than the state. The 2020 census is expected to provide more precise and up-to-date population numbers for our county. However, insuffic insufficient data was available at the time uh, the population estimates were prepared. So these figures will be included in next year's report. In accordance with the Housing Crisis Act of 2019, also known as Senate Bill 330, Santa Cruz County will continue to not enforce the Measure J growth goal limit on residential allocations within affected county areas while this statute is in place, which will be from January 1st, 2020 to January 1st, 2025. In Santa Cruz County, this includes the following CDPs, Live Oak, Pasa Tiempo, Paradise Park, and Amesti, all shown in blue on this map. All other aspects of Measure J unrelated to limiting building permits and population, such as the county's affordable housing requirements, will not be impacted by this bill. And um, staff will continue to track Measure J allocations and subsequent building permit issuance for reporting purposes. Um, in addition, pursuant to Santa Cruz County Code Section 12.02.020, all residential units impacted by the CZU August Lightning Complex fires will continue to be exempt from the Measure J residential permit allocation system. Based on the analysis detailed in the report, staff recommends that the growth goal be set at 0.25% for calendar year 2022. In past years, the county's growth goal has been consistent with the state of California's growth rate, but as noted earlier, there were a number of anomalies in the state's 2020 growth rate that contributed to population declines. And the state population estimates are expected to show positive growth in coming years. Um, the county is also in the final few years of the 2014-2023 RENA cycle, but currently more than half of the units allocated to our region have not been built. Um, and also, if we look at DOF and AMBAG population projections, the forecast is um, growing population rates in our region. And it's important to note that state and housing and ADU laws continue to be refined, and the state legislature has recently passed additional bills aimed at streamlining, streamlining housing permits and increasing infill development. So in light of all of this, staff is therefore recommending a 0.25% growth rate for calendar year 2022. This growth rate would result in an allocation of 130 market rate units available for the year 2022. Allocations will be distributed between the urban and rural areas of the county at a 75% to 25% ratio in order to recognize the greater potential for, for infill development in urban areas. The 2022 growth goal report also recommends as in previous years, that the unused market rate allocations from 2021 be carried over to 2022 in accordance with general plan policy 3.2 of the housing element. This would result in a projected total of 219 market rate residential building permit allocations available for 2022. Staff has found that establishment of the 2022 growth goal is exempt under the California Environmental Quality Act and a notice of exemption has been prepared. Staff therefore recommends that the Planning Commission, one, conduct a public hearing on the proposed year 2022 growth goal, two, adopt the resolution, Exhibit A, 
recommending a year 2022 growth goal of 0.25% for the unincorporated portion of Santa Cruz County. And three, recommend the filing of the CEQA notice of exemption, Exhibit B, with the clerk of the board. This concludes the staff presentation and I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Thank you, Natisha. I have some questions. Yes, Here. Commissioner Gordon. Thank you, and thanks for the report. I'm so glad we were able to get this moving, so I appreciate everyone's hard work this morning to make that happen with all our technical difficulties. I had a couple just generic quick questions. Um, what happens if we get to the limit of units? Well, the board always has the discretion to, you know, we can always come back to the board and discuss that with them and they can decide if they feel it's appropriate to increase the number of allocations. But it's important to note that we have not reached our maximum allocations for almost 20 years. And these are, can you clarify one other thing from here? The, the number of allocations is units or building permits? They are market rate residential building permits. So um, in essence, it is equivalent to units. So like if you have an apartment complex, you with one building, you would get one permit for the whole building. So say you build a 10 unit apartment complex that was within one building, that's one permit, correct? So that would only count as one, not as 10? Um, that is a good question. How is that normally processed? I guess it would depend on how the building permit is processed. Right, it's like condos, townhomes. Those stuff. are usually issued individually, I know for sure. Each unit gets a permit, even in a rental scenario. In a I, for the rental scenario, I'm not quite as certain. I know for townhome, townhomes, those are usually issued individually but um, I don't know if Jocelyn would have a better understanding of the building permits and how they're usually issued for rentals or apartments. Um, I am not. Okay. Um. But I do, I, uh, I can, you know, I can look into it and clarify this for you and confirm with the, the code, but I do believe it is supposed to be equivalent to units. Okay. Um, okay. A couple other quick questions here on page, and I'm not sure if this is leading to discussion or if I think this is still appropriate for these questions, but tell me if we need to let people talk before I ask more. Um, oh, just a, a note, I don't know, Jocelyn, if you can elevate Paya, but she might have more clarity on the, the unit permit kind of question. Um, yes, it looks like she has her hand raised. And um, Walter, will you please promote Paya Levine to panelist? So she can speak freely. Okay. Okay, so I believe Paya clarified that it does not matter rental or affordable. Um, it would be, the, per your question, it would be 10 allocations. Okay, so number of units is- Yes. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so on page 30 of the full report, page 16 of the, of the housing report here, uh, table nine, we, this is where it talks about the RENA numbers, right? And so, as you mentioned, we're pretty drastically below. We're about halfway there, and we only have two years left. So if we limit, if we're limiting the number next year to 219, and assuming the next year is very similar, and that's our only two years left, are we we're effectively saying that there's no way we can actually get to those arena numbers because we're not allowing it. Is that, right. Is um, that 
Well, I think it's important to note that the growth goal only limits market rate residential units. So that number would be more than sufficient to address <clears throat> our um, above moderate income um, units for the next few years. So it does not limit affordable units and those are primarily the units that we need to see developed to address our arena. Okay, got it, that makes sense. And SB 330 takes away any limits on any affordable units anyway, correct? Um, it would also impact market rate units, but it's only specifically in these um, affected county areas that I showed on the map. So it's a pretty limited geographical region that it, it would impact for, for the affected county area policy that I mentioned. So we're still gonna have more units available than, essentially the answer is we're not limiting arena numbers in any way by this. No. Um, the last question that I had was on page table 13, which is page 21 of the report and 35 of the packet. Mm -hmm. There's preliminary uh, some projects. This is a upcoming density bonus projects list. And so mm -hmm. some of them in preliminary review right now, uh, the last four, one, two, three, four, equal about 237 units. So are those four slated for next year already? And if so, does that mean we've already met our goal? Um, do you mean our growth goal limit? Yes. So these are in preliminary planning review um, and the, the growth goal limits allocations of building permits. So there, I would say, be a good amount of time in between, in between these projects getting passed and actually being issued building permits. So um, I don't know that we can predict exactly when these building permits will come through, but that will be part of our analysis next year when we, um, you know, when they have been approved or we'll examine where they are in the process and we'll accommodate for them next year. So, but there is potential based on some of these that we, you know, if, you know, magically they all went really quick and happen to pull, be ready to pull permits next year. I don't know what any of these projects are, where they're at, but there's potential that, you know, if not next year, the following, we have already met that goal. And so you're saying that next year we'll relook at it based on the new right. Plan. Yeah, it's important to note that these are preliminary. So a lot of these are simply um, design reviews or um, pre-applications. They don't even have full applications in a lot of the time. Um, so it's anticipated that in the next six months um, they won't be passed. So we probably won't won't see them coming through the building permit process for a while. But um, we'll be examining. Um, you know, next year and see, and we'll keep track of this obviously. And if we haven't, we see there's any issues and we're coming close against that, that um, growth goal limit, we would, um, you know, approach the, the board and, and uh, bring this up to the board if it seems to be an issue. Okay. All right. Thank you. That, um, that's all my questions for now. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other commissioner have questions of staff? Hearing none, I will open the public hearing. Ms. Drake, do we have participants? Um, let's see. I'm looking at our attendee list, and I just wanted to remind any member of the public, if you are calling in, to press star nine on your telephone to remotely raise your hand. And I am not seeing any members of the public chair. Thank you. Oh, I Having, do see a, I'm sorry, yes. a, a hand just went up. I okay. apologize. Um, I'm seeing um, an attendee by the name of Tino. Good morning, will you please state your name for the record? And can we please unmute Tino? Good morning. 
Hi, good morning. Uh, Tino here. Um, thank you everyone for, for your time here. Um, I do have something that I wanted to ask that isn't not necessarily connected to um, the current topic. Is, is this all right? Well, it's, it's not related at all. Uh, it, it is. It's, it's more of, it's regarding um, housing and the restrictions. Uh, it's, it's about the uh, uh, Legacy Older Structures Program, which we I think we touched on it um, a little bit earlier uh, about um, uh, the CZU burn area. Um, okay, well, I'll allow that. Go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so the, the the main issue is that for for the, there's an we have a lot of unpermitted units um, here in Santa Cruz County, and I think it would be great for uh, for for us to have a way to be to to permit our structures. The problem is that the the current uh, programs that we have available uh, kind of restrict us from ever for that ever being possible. Um, the legacy older structures program for anybody who has had uh, an unpermitted structure built before um, uh, the late 80s uh, would be um, would be able to get permitted as long as the building uh, of, you know we meet all the building standards um, and meet all the other uh, uh, standards but um, but in terms of getting permits for zoning a lot of times this becomes the issue. Um, there used to be a time when we had the the legalization assistance pro, uh, permit program. Unfortunately, even that had the same kind of restrictions and, and when it comes to zoning. So any homes that were built, you know, in the 60s, in the 50s and 70s, um, of course, might have kind of been uh, a little bit um, in uh, as far as current zoning centers might not be exactly eligible for that, especially if you're building on a fault line area or in any areas that uh, that are hazardous for fires. Now, what the legacy of older structures program does offer is for everybody who has a, lo a legacy structure to be eligible for that. Um, unfortunately, it's only if we fall into the burn area. And that's what I'm hoping, I'm asking if we could kind of, if we could extend that towards Older structures um, uh, pre pre that that time period. Any older structures before that time period. It gives a lot of us, uh, any of us who who live in such structures, um, a way to to uh, to be permitted and also safe when it comes to fires, earthquakes, and all of those things. Unfortunately, the uh, legalization permit program that's that's no longer even an option. And we, no matter what we do, uh, we have to go right back to the safe structures program, which is still like unpermitted, still undocumented. It makes it very difficult to kind of get um, uh, insurance coverage for all, uh, very expensive, you know, on top of that. <laughs> Even if it is for certain things, we can get coverage and stuff. So um, I, that's, that's all I'm asking for is if we could extend that, it would make uh, a lot of different homes in the area safe and 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 be prepared for what is going to happen at some point as, as climate is changing so um that is my request is if we could get uh an extension from uh for for the uh, legacy older structures program um and you know if not at least at, at a minimum like uh a new um ad, uh, addition for the um legalization assistance program um which is closed for some time now. Um, that's all I'll ask. Thank you for your time. Oh. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Is there anyone on staff that would want to address that very quickly? Um, we um, we do have Paya Levine, the interim planning director with us this morning, and I see she is raising her hand, so I believe she would like to address the comment. Paya? Yes. Are you muted? Please unmute Paya and allow her to speak freely. Can you hear me at this moment? Yes. Good yes. morning, Paya. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, Tino, um, I would like to address a few of the things that you said because I'm not sure that they're actually accurate. Um, the, the, the board's um, uh, LEAP program, which is the Safe Structures Program by another name, 
is still happening and I would encourage you to come into the planning department and find out whether your individual situation could be covered by that. Um, when you speak about the legacy program, that is a program where the board uh, determined as an emergency measure after the fire to extend um, uh, legally non-conforming privileges to any property that was built prior to 1986. Um, those, those entitlements being considered legally non-conforming typically extend to anything that was built prior to 1957 because that is a date at which you, needed, you first needed to have a building permit. So that's a way of recognizing properties that were built before the time permits were required. The board extended that to go all the way to 1986 in an effort to bring more of those properties into the fold. Um, it was done on an urgency basis and only for the burn area. Um, if, if your request is that that sort of thing be extended countywide, that is um, a very large change in how business is done. Um, the the um, planning is based on the issue of the permits. So um, what I would encourage you to do is come in and talk with us at the building counter and we'll see whether there's a way that you fit into some program that, um, that, that, that may help you in, in legalizing. Um, so that, that is what I would recommend. Thank you, Ms. Levine. Are there any other participants that have comments? Um, no, Chair, I'm not seeing any. Okay. Then I will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Do I hear a motion or is there any discussion? I had a little discussion, Chair Lazy. Okay, Commissioner. Unless someone else, I let someone else go if anyone had anything else to say first. But. I, I just had a question. Please. Yes, Schaefer Freitas. Okay. I just wanted, first of all, there's a lot of information in this report, and I appreciate staff's work on it. Um, it, it was very good. And I did have questions I couldn't quite follow, and I just wanted to make sure I was understanding it. Um, on page, let's see if I start with um, page 21, it lists the approved projects that will need, if I understand it, allocations, and that's 119 um, in five or more lots or units um, of approved projects and then pending projects, 38 units. Is that is that correct from staff? Yes, that's correct. Okay, okay. so you, if you add those two together, 38 and 119, that's 157 units that have already been approved are pending and we anticipate they will need an allocation. So I then looked, because um, I was trying to get the bottom line uh, figure um, to reconcile for me. I then looked, so that's 157 units and on page 22, it shows the remaining allocations available as 288. And if you subtract 157 from that, that's 131 available. And so that didn't um, reflect um, what is listed later on in the report on page 41 that we're, uh, that there are going to be um, 89 remaining allocations. Is that be, is the discrepancy there between 89 and 131 that we anticipate that uh, there will be more units that we're not aware of that were finalized or approved or pending and that, um, that accounts for that? So these are slightly different figures. The carryover of 89 is based on an estimation of the number of allocations that will be left after um, after um, uh, you know all of the allocations granted. Um, so we, what we did was we looked at the allocations granted. So if you go back to that page 22, mm -hmm. right? Um, that table shows the allocations granted of, as of this year. We're not 
calculating um, the pending and approved projects in the number of allocations granted. We're just looking at what was granted as of the first six months of this year. And so what we do is we project that 21 um, allocations granted for the first six months out um, to the first for the full year. And that gives us 42 allocations granted, estimated 42. Right. And we, right. we subtract that from the carryover available for this year. So the carryover of units is, it is the um, number of allocations set by the board for this year, subtracting the allocations granted this year. So that right. is where that number comes from. Which number is that? What could you go if you go back to page 41? Yeah, page 41. So that shows you um, under 2021 carry out over allocations. There were only um, that is the number of allocations that we estimate will be available if you subtract the number of allocations granted this year. Um, from if you subtract the allocations granted <laughs> from the allocations set by the board last year. Sorry, that was a little confusing. Yeah, um, it is because what you're talking about are allocations and projects that have been approved. Um, so not just and, approved. And so, right. So, okay. So maybe the thing to clarify is the um, tables five through seven, those are all planning applications. But what the growth goal is counting and tracking are building permit issuance. So there's a big, mm, there's a big yes. change, you know, there's a big amount of time between when a project is approved yes. and when the building permit is actually issued. Right. Okay. That, that helps clarify it. Sorry about that. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Because it didn't when you did the num when I did the numbers it didn't add up that way, so on page forty one then the um, eighty nine that are anticipated um, are then actually they are they are allocations, not building permits. The, well, those are that would be equivalent essentially. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. Okay, well, thank you. That helps clarify it. And I also, it, okay. it's, it's very confusing. Um, I also wanted to um, commend you on providing information about affordable housing and ADUs, which I found was really interesting in terms of tracking the affordable housing that's been produced. I know that it's not a whole lot, but um, I believe on, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, on page 32, it does show that the total affordable units in that table is 21% of all units um, since 1979. And I just I just thought it was important to, to note that it does include ADUs, which we are assuming are affordable by design. But um, to me, that's a, a, a great number to see. Just, just wanted to point that out. Great. Thank you. Any more questions from the commissioners? Yes, Ms. Commissioner Gordon. Thank you. I had a follow-up question to that, and I got a little lost there. But the so Commissioner Schaefer Freitas pointed out that tables five and six equal 157 units. Those are so that's what we assume is going to happen next year. Is that correct? You're saying that there's going to be 157, most likely. And currently, we're expecting that at least. Is that what you're saying? So, yeah, what we're saying is, um, you know, we've identified these projects that have been approved in the planning, like they have received a, uh, an entitlement and been approved through the planning process. And we anticipate some of those may come through with a building permit um, in the following year. They have not yet. Some of, it looks like only six of them have come through so far this year. Um, and, but we, we made sure that our growth goal for, for the coming year uh, accommodates this um, number of units. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. and so that, you know, leaves us 219 minus 157. My quick math is not so good today. 
So that's 62 units that we may not know about. And that includes single family homes, you know, everything that's not a fire, essentially Correct. a fire pickup right now. Is that correct? Correct. 62. So essentially we're saying we actually are only allocating 62 more than what we know of. Um, well, I think, uh, you know, we have six more, six months left to this year. So some of them might come in the end of this year. They might not, they might all come in 2022, but we have the allocations left for this year. And um, we believe we have enough allocations left for 2022 as well to accommodate this need. So, but then if they come out this year or next, it doesn't really matter because it's the remainder just is less next year than it's not, right? Correct, exactly. Okay, so there's still like kind of this same kind of bucket. Um, okay, I appreciate that. I feel like, you know, just as a point of discussion for everyone here, you know, there's a lot of state bills coming up, like you mentioned. Um, SB9 is a huge one, you know, that could make a huge dent in this number. And just in general, I would say that I, I know, I hear that we haven't met those numbers yet. I think there's a lot of state bills coming up that are gonna change at least the planning side of things to make growth more possible um, from, from the state's perspective. And so I wanna be careful that, you know, and no one can pro project what that is, right? But I'm concerned that if we don't allocate enough right now, that we just have to come back to the board to allocate more, that we're kind of wasting a little bit of time. So is there a harm in upping this number by, you know, a little bit since we only have 62 units essentially available um, that we don't know about right now? Is there a, like, you know, is there a process for that? Or, you know, I'm not sure really where that goes. So let me clarify my question. Um, so are you, I guess I would say I'm not I'm not prepared or in a position to consider that right now. Um, I don't think that that's been agendized properly either. If we're going to um, consider, you know, changing the parameters of of the growth goal um, document, um, so I, I wouldn't be prepared to do that right now. But if that's something that you want to talk to staff to or put a letter on. Um, that's something you can yeah, do. I guess I'm just, I'm, I guess what I'm, I'm just concerned that maybe we aren't counting for enough based on the state level. So if we just said there was a higher percentage, like 0.5% growth, that would make that number go up a little bit and be a little safer. So I guess my ultimate question is, I know that the 0.25 is over state's current growth goal, but what, what prevents us from just saying, okay, we just pick a higher number so we don't ever have to go back to the board or worry about it? I, I'm, that's fine. You can propose that. I'll, I would vote against it. Understood. I also, I also would like to see some reason why we think it's going to be greater. I mean, what the methodology is. I, did, I agree with Commissioner Dan. I couldn't vote on that right now. There's too many unknowns, and it's. Um, not agendized to be discussed. So I, I would not be prepared to. Understood. I guess my yeah. question is really more for staff is like, where does that number come from? Is it just a number we pick or is it considering all of these things that are happening in the world? I'm seeing that um, Paya yes. would like to comment. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, Commissioner Gordon, there is a top level, there is a limit to what the growth goal could be. So it's not just any number. And that limit is equivalent to the state growth in that year. So um, the idea of Measure J was for the county to take its quote unquote fair share of state population growth, but not more than that. So that is the functional top limit. Understood. Okay, that makes sense. So you're not like projecting out based on possibilities, really. It's all based on historical data. That's correct. Understood. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Thank you, everybody. Is um, is anyone ready to make a motion on this? Um, I'll move the staff recommendation to adopt the 0.25% growth goal and um, the filing of the CEQA notice of exemption. I'll second that. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, 
I will call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Any abstention? Thank you all and thank you staff for a very comprehensive report and discussion. Thank you. And we will move on then to number seven on the agenda. If you have to leave Commissioner Dan, that would be okay. It's uh, the planning director's report. Yes, uh, we have with us Paya. Uh, uh, Paya Levine, the interim planning director this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I don't have a specific report to make. I just thought that I would um, um, just um, let you know and acknowledge that I am um, acting as the interim director right now. And so um, uh, Kathy has re retired and, um, and I'll be in that role for the time being. And I look forward to continuing to work with all of you. Paya, what is the status of recruiting for a new planning director? The recruiting has not yet begun, but I expect that that decision will be taken at some point in the not too distant. So we're probably talking about the end of the year, beginning of next year? I think it's reasonable, yeah, um, to think that by the end of the year, we'll know where, um, what, what the path is. Okay, thank you. And the reports on upcoming meeting dates, and agendas? Um, yes, so the next agendized meeting date is um, September 22nd, Chair, and we do not have any meeting reservation forms in for that date. So it's looking at this point like the September 22nd meeting will be canceled. However, we will confirm next week with the Planning Commission. And we also do not have any um, reservation forms in for the month of October. However, I expect that that will change here in the next couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. And County Council's report. You're, you're muted. I believe he said he had nothing to report. Oh, thank you. And thank everybody for this meeting. And I will say that it's adjourned. Thank, thank you. you.